This is Ben Gillespie interviewing Nabil Musa at his home in Seattle, Washington on August 17th, 2020 for the Smithsonian Institution Archives of American Art Pandemic Project. Nabil, could you tell me a little bit about how your work and your life have changed since March of this year? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, uh, I was traveling quite a bit before this happened. Uh, my husband, Scott, uh, Scott uh, has a job here in Seattle. And unfortunately, it's so expensive here as an artist, I can't afford, you know, the kind of space that, that I want to be able to work out of. So uh, I transitioned from Atlanta to Georgia to Columbus, Ohio, where I purchased uh, an 8,000, 6,000 square foot warehouse that I turned into my art studio and basically an archive for all of my artwork that I've created over the years. So I've been traveling back and forth doing that. So whenever you know, I feel the need to be creative and just need to work on uh, large scale pieces, uh, I, I go back and forth. And that has, for the most part, kind of come to, uh, to, a, to a halt. Uh, air travel is not something I'm eager to do right now, especially with the airlines you know, filling up uh, quite a bit. Uh, so I'm basically here in Seattle and I do have about a 200 square foot space that um, you know, adjusting to slowly. So I've been going in there and um, I'm going to use the word trying to be creative while I'm here. Well, that's, I mean, yeah, we're all forced to work with what we can. Um, yeah. Could you tell me a little bit about your, your experience of the pandemic, being an artist who's uh, traveled and connected around the world and um, thinking about that interconnectedness and how it's now reflected or stymied in your experience? Yeah, I mean, I, I think one of the things that's frustrating uh, to me personally is that I have been working so hard for so many years you know, to get my career going and things always kind of come, uh, like all the hard work pays off in a very short window. It's really weird. And all of a sudden, you know, you get contacted by, this magazine and that magazine and, and people want to write articles or want to do shows for you and you know of course finally like after finishing renovating the warehouse in columbus and i'm finally focused on art and when i went out and started meeting people you know in columbus in the art world and making connections and i've got shows coming up and and uh, big fundraisers i'm involved in all that came to a stop so you know, it was, it was really frustrating from that aspect, uh, the feeling all that energy and just being enthusiastic and just seeing that there's you know something really good on the horizon that's that's happening in my art career, and uh, and then slowly seeing everything kind of come to a stop. They pushed it out a couple of months, and then it was six months, and now everything's about a year out, and some are just kind of given up altogether. Uh, so that part of it, you know, has has been. Uh, uh, frustrating. And how are you seeing changes in what they're going to do a year out? Are there more digital events that are popping up and opportunities or are people really just waiting for a vaccine and to open back up? I'm going to speak for me personally. I'm waiting for the vaccine. I'm waiting for things to get better. A digital just doesn't um, do it for me as, as much. Um, you know, and then again, you know, somebody like me who's not uh, technology savvy, I have to hire people to do this. And it's frustrating trying to find the right people at affordable prices that can actually accomplish what I need. So for me, I, you know, I'm taking one step forward and two steps back with technology. Uh, so I am looking forward when things go back to normal and I can actually meet with people one on one and be able to uh, move forward w with, with my art career. Well, thinking about what you're able to do right now, I know that advocacy for refugees has been so vital uh, in your work. Now that you're stuck at home, you've got a limited amount of space to be creative in, how is your notion of advocacy changing? Uh, I think there's a lot of frustration uh, in, involved in it because it's, it's very limiting for me uh, to, to work from home. You know, and, and part of it is just going out and talking to people makes bigger difference you know talking to somebody uh, through social media i to me just not as effective uh, I, I i believe in in personal connection that human connection is, 
is so vital. So uh, now I'm having to be uh, uh, creative again in how I try and get my message out on social media and how to get people involved. And you know, I mean, and I'll be honest. Uh, you know, social media, unless you've, you've got something with a dog or a cat or something funny, uh, people are avoiding the real issues of humanity, and it's it's a big problem. It's a it's a frustrating problem for somebody like me, who wants to make a difference, who wants to bring attention to the human struggle, to the atrocities that are taking place outside of our bubble that that, that we live in, whether it's your neighborhood, your city, the country, you know, we, we're still in different types of bubbles and we're not really looking out to see uh, how people are struggling, uh, it, 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 you know, in other countries. And what sort of crises and struggles do you think are missing the most from our, our general accounts, what you're seeing on social media um, and in general in the news? Gosh, um, you know, I think there's two sides to every story. And my uh, frustration, uh, my disappointment is that we have the leftists and, and, and the right, you know, and the right have become so extreme in their opinions that nobody can see that both sides, there's a reason why things are going on. You know, you can't put the blame on everybody in, in one direction. Uh, uh, obviously, if somebody is, is, is I mean, I just said, if somebody's being a racist, we need to find out why somebody is, is, is a racist. Uh, you know, you can't just call somebody racist without digging in to find out the reasons behind it and, and being able to have conversation about the real issues uh, with that. Because when you do, people seem to just automatically become very defensive. Uh, and then I think we're not going to accomplish anything that way. Uh, you know, our political system, uh, Democrats versus Republicans, uh, you know, uh, Trump didn't create himself. We created Trump. And, and until we analyze that and understand why he became who he is, why he became the president of the United States, we're going to have somebody worse than him down the road. So winning the elections for the Democrats uh, is not really a solution. It's a temporary solution. How can we dig deep and, and, and have a serious conversation and be inclusive, no matter how difficult that may seem? And being attuned to all these um, issues circulating and the international refugee crisis, do you find that your own practice is changing? Are you drawn to a different medium, different types of subjects? Uh, interesting that you ask that. It, usually, you know, a lot of my work tends to be very abstract. You know, I, I every once in a while I go back and I'll work with portraiture and figurative, but that's not something that I naturally gravitate to. But while I've been here in Seattle, uh, you know, it, for some reason, like the, the portraiture became uh, somewhat of an important importance. And while I was in the studio, really trying to be abstract you know, something kept clicking. It's like, no, I, I've got to look at uh, portraits. I've, I've got to, uh, you know, something is calling me to do that. So I created, I think, probably about seven or eight portraits in, in the studio that are actually currently on a show at Gallery 110 here in Seattle uh, for the month of August. Um, and obviously that didn't happen by itself. You know, my energy shifted and I wanted to become more about, more personalized and, and to be able to, uh, uh, I guess, be able to talk about history and where we are right now uh, as human beings. Uh, so each portrait is different, represents, uh, you know, somebody from a different culture. And, you know, like most of my work, it's ambiguous. I allow the artists, uh, I allow the artist viewers, whoever is looking at the artwork to see what they want in those images. I try to make it as re relatable as possible so, th so that they can take something meaningful uh, after seeing the artwork. And was, how are the logistical burdens and hurdles to uh, mounting a show right now? <laughs> uh, you know, I try to be, you know, with stuff like this, uh, I've learned to just go with the flow and not really 
uh, uh, stress too much over it. I mean, maybe I guess as you get older, uh, that type of behavior kind of starts to manifest itself, which is wonderful. Um, I just, you know, I did the show. I believe that I did my best with it. Uh, hopefully people will see it. We may not have a lot of people attending it, but I hope that it has traction, if not now, uh, you know, down the road, people will become aware of it and, and go back and review it. I'm really interested that you're turning to the portrait now and, um, you know, away from abstraction to the very personal, the individual. And I'm wondering, how are you feeling about connection in this period and how are you maintaining connections with your loved ones and your broader community? Yeah, that's really been difficult. Um, I am a people person, so I need to hug as many people as I can on a daily basis. That's just my personality. Uh, and, and, and be around them. And that's been really difficult. It, it came down to just, I'm so fortunate that I have my husband, uh, you know, with me and we get along like crazy. So for us being together has actually been a blessing uh, because before the, uh, the COVID-19, uh, you know, we were uh, apart quite a bit. And it's something we had not really been used to. It was, it was after 13 years being together, you know, trying to adapt to that was really difficult. So we're grateful in a way that we are together full time right now. And it's been like that since I would say um, middle of January. And now we're trying to keep it that way. So we figure out how can we, you know, after all this is done, how do we reinvent ourselves and find ways so we can be together uh, full time again? Because honestly, like nothing else is, is more important. Uh, and that's, I think, one of the the things about this virus, this epidemic, is that it reminds you of who is important in your life and who isn't. Um, and, and when it comes to my friends, it's been difficult. You know, we tried to Zoom. After a while, you know, you, you, get, you get over it. It's not uh, as uh, meaningful because you've got five, six people, you know, and you're trying to give everybody an opportunity to chat. So I typically just pick up the phone and I call my friends or we text and a lot of times, like, you know, we send also positive messages to each other because we all know, uh, you know, that we're all struggling in our own ways. And I've got friends who are single and, and, I'm, and I'm always worried about them because I can't imagine how difficult that must be for them to be by themselves constantly um, and not being able to be around uh, other individuals. I was thinking about that digital mediation as an artist who's worked so much with the idea of the veil, with um, what we can reveal to another, what we conceal. Um, I can't help but think about the relation of that to, well, both to your new interest in portraiture and what is what can be made available through portraiture, uh, as well as what can be made available through our digital channels. So, so I'm sorry, I missed the, the question between, I heard both, but what were you actually trying to ask me? I guess I guess I didn't really pose a question in there. Um, I was I was wondering about the um, how are you thinking about those ideas of concealment and revelation um, in terms of portraiture? Do you still feel that that's a driving force for you in your work? Um, is that useful? Um, okay, so if I think and if I understand your question correctly, you know, art doesn't have to be one genre; it could be many. And a message can be portrayed no matter what type of media you use. Uh, so for me, it, it, what makes the message powerful uh, is uh, what drove the artist. Because for me, I go by feeling, I go by emotion, uh, and I go, like, there's, a, there's a compassion component to everything I do. So, and, and a lot of times when viewers look at my work, they say like they can feel it. They, they sense that drive, that, you know, the emotion behind it and, and what makes my work uh, so powerful. So whether it's portrait or whether it's just abstract, I don't think it really makes a difference. Uh, it just comes down to the quality of the work uh, and the clarity of the message behind it. Um, okay, I guess um, I would also love to hear about what's sort of drawing your attention besides, so, Portraiture is coming in there. Have you been drawn to um, different sorts of books or movies? Is there something that has a special hold on you during quarantine? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I would say I'm kind of uh, uh, sick of watching TV, for, for one, because uh, there's a lot of garbage out there and actually the news as well. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll be frank with you. I, I think like uh, all of this uh, uh, negativity is, has, has really impacted me in, in a way because I tend to be a very positive person and I always find the good in everything. But in the past, especially past month, it's been really hard. Uh, everything I watch, uh, very few people focus on the positive and it's always about how bad things are going to become, how bad they are and what we are to expect. And it is taking a toll. So I'm trying right now to avoid a lot of uh, that type of uh, media coverage. And I'm trying to focus more on wholesome uh, TV shows. You know, there's not really a lot out there uh, on, on that subject, but I am finding stuff. I'm reading a lot about uh, uh, food, you know, uh, natural ways to, to grow food, to take care of your body. So I'm focusing more on those. And also just going back again and really just uh, uh, reading uh, spiritual books to try and, and clear my head and refocus and get centered. That to me is the most important part. And it's so funny, so Scott, my husband and I were sitting here about three days ago and we were having that conversation. He goes, you know, I'm a little worried about you because you seem to be down and that's not uh, typical for you. And I said, yeah, I said, honey, I just need like something, like I wish I could just go to a spiritual center, just like be around people who, who are just having something positive to say I just need to go back and dig up videos, books, whatever it is that I can find and start doing that. And the next morning, my, my good friend Julie sends me a short video clip about spirituality. And you know, it's so timely because I, I am one of those people that believes in, in the connective power, that, that energy, what you put out, you will receive. And I put out to the universe that I need that positive messaging. And I must have shared that video with probably about 60 people because you know it was so timely for me and and just kind of brought me back uh, to being centered and say you know what it all has to do with me i can't blame anybody else what's going on in my life is my fault i need to get centered and i need to, to find that clarity so i've been sharing that video you know with with, with my friends on social media uh, and hopefully it will uh, it will help somebody else as well well uh just to to wrap up here, I'm wondering what sorts of positive things are you looking forward to in your own life as 2020 keeps going and as we approach 2021 with alarming celerity? Yeah, you know, I, uh, I feel, I think, I would like to say, I would love to see all of us as human beings, as a collective, really try and focus on, on the positive uh, element of things and if we can shift from the negative to the positive I think we can conquer this a lot quicker uh, you know it, it's I'm, I'm not a religious person you know I uh, I'm more spiritual than anything else so my focus is trying to take care of myself uh, you know make sure my husband is well taken care of as well and my friends and be supportive as much as I can to anyone that needs me um, you know, and just share stories with people that what's going on around the world because, you know, recently we saw the devastation in Lebanon, you know, uh, uh, over 300,000 people homeless. And when you talk about numbers that large, people just can't really get a grasp of the severity of, uh, of this explosion that took place. And when, when, you, when you talk about 80% of the grain is destroyed, that country is running out of food and we've got to do something as a collective to make a difference. So I try and share short stories like the one I had mentioned to you about my friend Rita. You know, I had posted her apartment, how all the windows uh, were blown inside her apartment, completely destroyed it. Uh, she's, she's been in such a shock. I haven't really been able to talk to her. Uh, uh, all I know is that she wasn't in the apartment, obviously, because she would have been either severely hurt or she might have actually died through, through that incident. But she's alive, she's safe, she's doing well, but she's traumatized. So I try and share these stories uh, wherever I can to, to remind people that 
like we talked about earlier, we're all human beings. We're all, we all have similar, uh, more things in common than we do different. So how do we focus on the positive? How do we focus on the love and the kindness and embrace the differences that we have and, and try and help them? It's not just, you know, it's all over the Middle East, uh, African countries. People need our help locally. Locally, people need our help. So how can we just, uh, and I think if we just take the focus off of ourselves for a little bit and put that focus on just one other human being, we will have that positive shift start. Well, that's a wonderful note to end on. Thank you very much for speaking with me today. Thank you, man. I appreciate your time.